the first of which a versatile Italian with spectacular movement. We want to find out a little more about the Bracco Italiano with the only person to handle one to a couple of group wins, Nicola Maddox. Well, Nicola, what a past couple of months you've had. Absolutely phenomenal, can't believe it. Now, it's, it's not a breed many people in the UK will have heard of, but how far back do you think it can be traced? Yeah, I mean, Bracco is a, a very ancient breed of Italian gun dog. I mean, there are writings back to the 5th and 5th and 6th century, um, and they've been a distinct breed in Italy since the Middle Ages. They were very prized by the Italian nobility, and families such as the Medici bred them, and they were originally bred in, in, in two specific parts of Italy, the Lombardy and Piedmont regions, um, and that gave rise to two different types of Bracco Italiano. Right. There was a, a lighter, racier type, which were generally orange and white. They were from the Piedmont regions of Italy, um, where it was sort of more mountainous and hilly, and, and the heavier chestnut type of dog was bred in the Lombardy regions, which suited the flatter open fields. Mm. It's widely believed that the um, Egyptian hound and the um, Persian mastiff were instrumental in, make in making the breed, yeah. yeah. They, petty, yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, petty, petty, yeah, petty. Sorry, ool, ool. My and petty. You, you've got him to come back there, but you've had to learn a few words to... I have, them. yeah, I've had to learn a few Hungarian and Italian words. He's a bit <laughs> multilingual, is the dog. Um, so what was it in those early days of the breed it was, it was designed and bred for? They were originally bred to drive birds into nets, but obviously, with the, you know, them being an ancient dog, with the invention of the gun, the hunting style was adapted slightly. Um, and to, to modern days, how have they come to these shores? Um, no, they, they haven't been here at all. It was 1988, a couple called Liz right. and Jonathan Shaw, um, Sentling Kennels, they went over to Italy to watch Spinoni at a field trial right. and obviously they made a huge impression on the couple yeah. and in 1989 the first dog arrived in, in quarantine, his name was Zerbo. Over the recent years with obviously the pet passport scheme coming in there's been quite a boom and there's quite a few people that have imported them in now from Europe and around the world. And you said they made such an impression. At Windsor you said to us that he moves better when he's got birds. Up got his birds. Nose. Yeah. Yeah, and I can. I mean, I can try and run as fast as I can in a ring round here, and he's not even out of first gear. He's just like whistling at the side, and you're like, you know, come on, mother. I mean, the movement's described as almost elastic. It should be free flowing. It should be completely effortless. Um, and like I say, they can keep that up for, for hours and hours mm. in the field. I mean, I can stand there and watch him for just 20 minutes, just watching him move. I'll never, ever get tired of, of, of watching him move. He's fantastic, but, right. you know, there's no way my little legs can carry me fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, and take us over the, the rest of the appearance. Uh, what is it the standard says to expect? Uh, the standard says that they should be a, a strong, well-balanced, powerful, well-muscled hunting dog, quite noble appearance. They should be almost square in outline with a very deep chest. Um, the head is obviously a distinctive part of the breed. It should be very sculpted, the chiselling under the eyes, divergent planes of the head, that's extremely important. The head should be long and quite narrow, um, with lean cheeks. If you look at it from the front, the sides of the muzzle sort of converge slightly. Um, and in profile, they should be sort of Roman-nosed. Uh, what you should be looking at, basically, is a working dog. I understand that not a lot of people have the opportunity to work the dogs and they may not wish to do so but especially for the breeders it's imperative we don't have a split like that we see in all the gun dog breeds with the working strain and the show strain you know these are all working dogs and we should strive to show that off um, and what about temperament? As a, as a hunting dog, the temperament has got to be paramount. Yeah, I mean, as I've found them, I've found them on the main to be quite calm and collected. He's really uh, good with children. But obviously I do a lot of work with mine. They, yes. you know, they have a lot of exercise, and I'm sure without exercise they could become quite frustrated and boisterous. Yeah. Um, and there's not much coat to speak of, but what sort of grooming do they need? I just go over these, you know, once a day with a, a rubber grooming mitt. They do shed quite a lot of hair. I have um, Vimeranas as well, another short, right. short hair coated breed, and I've found that these definitely lose a lot more hair. And if someone wants to buy a Bracco as a pet, have you any advice? I would definitely recommend do your research first. Choose a good breeder. Be prepared to wait for the right puppy for you. They are wonderful dogs and wonderful characters. They can be quite clown-like at times. But I think a Bracco with a job to do is definitely a happy Bracco. You know, they're, they're, they're very intelligent dogs, and I'm sure they'd get frustrated with you know lack of boundaries and rules, etc. So general obedience is, is obviously a must for everybody.